So in my last video, I discussed the Black Friday sales and talked about whether or not you should be buying plugins. And we should really be careful to just dial it back a little bit sometimes and not go overboard with our purchases. And what I loved is that in the comment sections, you guys really responded to that in the same way. And a lot of you felt the same way that maybe sometimes we can go overboard with plugin purchases. And you know that often the best solution is to have fewer plugins. So Thanks to all of you that actually commented down below. That was great to hear your feedback. Now today I'm gonna to be looking at the one thing that I did purchase in the Black Friday sales. And it's not a typical plugin that you might think. It's definitely something a little bit less sexy and cool. And what it is, is the sound id reference software so if you don't know what sound id is the sound id reference used to be called sonar works and what we use it for is to tune our headphones or our speakers to get a flatter frequency response to assist us in mixing so some of you might know that i recently moved house in the last year and i've been building this studio space and the last thing that I need to really make this a professional sounding space beyond just my regular acoustic treatment and acoustic panels is some professional speaker tuning. And to tune your speakers in a professional way, you really need the help of some software and special microphones. And that's where Sound ID comes in. Now, I'm not saying that everyone should go out and purchase this software. I think that maybe you need to get to know your space. You need to get to know your headphones. Maybe, you know, maybe you have a lot more acoustic treatment that you should do first before actually bothering with this software because if you haven't treated your room just a little bit you're going to have a bunch of other acoustic anomalies and problems in your room anyway so for me this is just the final touch to get that little bit more out of my ability when mixing and i've never used the sonarworks software before so if you're interested dive on in with me and let's go through the setup procedure um, it should be an interesting one so we have this measuring software here and then this is the actual Sonarworks software on this window here. And you can see that I've already set up a couple of my usual headphone pairs, which was really interesting. And if you're sort of interested in getting a reference ID or Sonarworks for your headphones, um, I could do a review on that as well. But I just did a quick setup just because I had those there. But um, what I'm actually gonna be doing today is setting up my speakers. And what we need to do is use the sound ID reference measure software. And there's one little bit extra piece of equipment that we need to make all of this work. And it arrived today. <laughs> so let's open that up. Alrighty. Here we go. All right, so in this little box, we have ooh, some stickers, always like stickers. They'll go on the laptop. But the thing we wanna have a look at is this. Now this is this special reference microphone, which I'll explain in a second. And inside that box, of course, comes the microphone clip for that and a little guide on how to get started. If you've never seen one of these before, this is a specialized microphone that you use for tuning and calibrating speakers. And kind of what it is, is a special condenser microphone with a very, very small diaphragm. And in that small diaphragm there, tiny, tiny little diaphragm, it can collect a very flat frequency response. So this is sort of the secret to tuning your speakers. So first up, we'll put this mic clip on. Get our microphone nice and safe. Lovely. So what I've got to do is cable up the microphone, run it into my interface, and then make sure it's not playing back through the speakers as well, because obviously then we'll get some feedback and we don't want that. Cool, so we'll do that now. So I've just got to get phantom power to this microphone here. There it is. It appears to be getting signal, which is cool. And I'm probably gonna have to mute, obviously, this microphone in a minute. Next. Send to our channel five. 
All right, saying to tap the microphone. <laughs> um, hang on a sec. I mean, it's there. Yo, 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 yo. All right. I don't really like tapping microphones like that, but it's interesting that they just like go for it. So <laughs> if they say so, it's my microphone ID. Might skip this one for you guys. So um, that all registered. Left speaker, right speaker. Cool, they're working, speakers are working. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Left speaker. Right speaker. All right. Clear out anything you could bump into within your listening area. Beautiful. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do is mute this mic. And then I guess you're hearing me through the reference mic. That's interesting. That'll be interesting to hear how that sounds because this is now off. Um, cool. So I'm just adjusting this to kind of be where my ears would be center of the speakers right there okay so a little tip so what I had to do there was make sure in my control software here I'd actually muted the input of channel 5 so that way that I didn't get any feedback. So if anyone's using any control software, you've got to mute the output of that uh, microphone channel just so it doesn't feed back while you set your levels. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off uh, any microphones in the room and it's just gonna play back the audio um, and go through its tests. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. So what's cool about this is now, as it was testing there, it has actually determined the distance between my two speakers. That's kind of insane. <laughs> All right, cool. So now it's calibrated the listening spot versus the speaker location. Now I'm gonna to have to do a whole bunch of other interesting placements around the room and I think it's gonna tune the frequency response of the whole room. So this is gonna be interesting. Six and a half hours later. So that took a little while. Um, there was a lot of points of measurement that the software had to do with the microphone. It wasn't difficult or anything. Um, it was just constantly fidgeting around with the microphone and getting things in the right spot. But really, it's kind of pretty easy and self-explanatory. The only trick I had was that thing where I forgot to mute my microphone's output so it wasn't feeding back through the speakers. So just that's one to remember. <laughs> it seems obvious, but... You know, sometimes we trick ourselves. 
Anyway, um, what's interesting is now I've got a pretty cool measurement of the nodes and the frequency response of my room. So what I can see here is that I've got a peak in my room at about 50 hertz and then quite a significant dip at 80 hertz and then another rise around 100 and then the octaves here. So 140, 120, 250 and then the 400 mark almost there. And so what we can see is that the low frequency response of the room is quite similar in both speakers. And then there's some difference in the high frequencies that could be because of the desk, it could be all kinds of things. But what's interesting is at least in both the left and right, I don't have anything too odd. There is some slight differences, but nothing crazy. Yeah, pretty cool. And then it's put a slight delay here, 0.1 milliseconds there on the left side. So that's interesting as well. Um, and then a level difference. So what it's saying here is that my right speaker is 0.8 dB louder. And what's interesting to me with that is I thought that my right speaker actually was a little bit louder. And I've tried fiddling around with the adjustments on both of those speakers, but I couldn't get them balanced. Um, and this is going to correct for that. I really like that it's picked up on that. So yeah, I was pretty sure my right speaker was slightly louder than the left. Um, so that's really interesting. And it's actually picked up some things that I thought I was hearing. Cool. And so all I've got to do is load this profile here, which I just did. There's my speaker profile. And now the calibration is on. All right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to play some music and I'm going to have a listen to how it's actually sounding in the room. Uh, this is going to be cool. So maybe I can actually hear things a little bit more balanced. So, wow, um, pretty crazy. So obviously I can't show you the difference in what I'm hearing in the room, but what I can tell you that I'm hearing is when I go back to the non-calibrated setting, I can hear the muddiness in the low mids from the problems in this room. I can hear how the room is amplifying that 50 and 100 hertz a little bit and over exaggerating it a little bit and once i put the calibration on i can hear how much flatter my frequency response is in the room it's not subtle but it's also surprising like i think that the room here i've actually managed to treat it pretty well for the size and for what i could manage i feel like i could kind of adequately mix without the sound reference software, but what's gonna be really, really interesting is from now on, do I manage my low frequencies much, much better? And do I get a much clearer, punchier low end and get a better balance across the left and right now that my speakers are calibrated more evenly? It's gonna be really, really interesting. Uh, what I could definitely hear besides the low end was the center image in here in my listening position was much, much, much clearer. And that's a huge positive because now I'm sure when I'm putting something in the center it's and I'm hearing something in the center, I know it's gonna be there. And same for the left and right. So that's gonna be amazing to mix with. There is a lot of pros to having this because it gives you, I guess, a lot more confidence with your mixes. So hopefully you enjoyed this video so far. If anyone's interested in this software, when you've got any questions, hit me up in the comment section down below and I can answer anything so far that I've come across. And I'm really, really interested to see how much of an improvement I get out of my mixes. Because even if it is a 5 to 10% increase on a just a better overall mix, that's huge. And that's the difference between a good mix and an amazing mix. So remember... As I always say on this channel, it's not about going out and spending heaps of money on plugins. It's about finding tools that you need to do your job better. So for me, hopefully this is a tool that is going to get me that next five to 10% in my mixes. So as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.